Picel reports to the small council that the conclave in Aldtown has announced the end of the longest summer in living memory and shows the white raven sent for this purpose. Varus adds that the small folk say that a long summer will be followed by an even longer winter, which Picel dismisses as a peasant superstition. Tyrion appears at a small council meeting to inform them that he has been made acting hand of the king by his father. Cersei angrily orders councillors to leave. Picel, along with Littlefinger, Varys, and Yano Slint, abandon the room. In a later small council meeting, Cersei reads Rob's peace terms aloud to the small council before tearing them up. Cersei asks Alton Lannister to deliver their reply and he accepts. Cersei also asks him to tell Jaime that he has not been forgotten, to the consternation of the other council members. Picel reports a raven from Castle Black and gives its message to Tyrion. Varys interjects that the wildlings are organizing behind the king beyond the wall man's raider. Tyrion says that the message is from Lord Commander Gior Mormont and that he is asking for more men. Cersei says that they cannot spare any because they are fighting their own war. Tyrion reads a troublesome passage. The cold winds are rising, and the dead rise with them. Picel dismisses it as northern superstition. Tyrion meets with Picel in his dining room. He has complained of constipation and Picel gives him a vial of laxatives. Tyrion compliments that maester's knowledge and then asks him to keep a confidence. He tells him that he is hoping to make a marriage alliance with House Martel in Dornay by offering Marcella's hand to their heir Prince Tristane. Tyrion specifies that Picel should not speak to the queen. Picel does so anyway, and she later confronts Tyrion about the plans. Tyrion, Bronn, and Timot burst into Picel's chamber while he is in bed with a prostitute. Picel denies telling Cersei, but Tyrion explains that he has implicated himself because he was the only one aware of the plan to approach the Dornish. Tyrion asks how long Picel has been spying for Cersei, and Picel claims that he has been loyal to House Lannister since the days of the Mad King. Tyrion then tells Bronn to cut of Picel's beard because he doesn't like it. Tyrion brings up his betrayals of past hands of the king and suggests that he poisoned John Aaron. Picel denies poisoning Aaron, but admits that he was aware that Aaron knew of Cersei's incest. Tyrion accuses him of letting Aaron die as a threat to the Lannisters and Picel does not deny this. Tyrion then orders Picel confined to the Black Cells and gives Daisy a coin for her services. He then gives Daisy an additional coin after seeing how much of a struggle the supposedly frail Picel puts up. Cersei demands that Picel is released and reinstated via Lancel. Tyrion agrees to release Picel, but refuses to let him return to the small council. Prior to the Battle of the Blackwater, Cersei requests a supply of the anxiolytic and poison essence of Nightshade, but does not say why she wants it. She almost uses it to poison her son Tommen when she believes the battle is lost. She is stopped just in time by the arrival of her father. Picel visits the recovering Tyrion and gloats that he is no longer acting hand of the king since his father, Tywin, has returned to the city. Later, during a court session to honor Tywin and Littlefinger, Picel and Cersei make a show of convincing King Joffrey, who announces his desire to marry Marjorie Tyrell, to set aside his betrothal to Sansa. Picel informs him that he spoke to the new High Septon and that the latter approves of breaking Joffrey's betrothal to Sansa.